Welcome back everyone. Till this point we have seen how can we implement Spring security that we have tried form login, we have tried with database. But now I want to use OAuth2. So let's say if you are building a website where you want to provide security, you want user to be logged in. Of course you can have your own database, you can have your own way of verifying the user. But we have one issue. When you have your data, I mean when you have user details in your database, in your server, you have to protect it, right? Of course it becomes difficult to manage that database and if, if someone hacks it, you are responsible. Oh, that's one issue. The second issue is, even if you have your database, even if you have your own server, most of the users, they are using some type of social networking login. Example, if you have, let's say your consumer has a Google account, they have a Facebook account. So can we have Google login in your website? I mean, you don't have to manage the data, right? It will be managed by Google. So how can we do that? To achieve that, we have this amazing feature known as OAuth2. So what I will do, so let me search for OAuth2. So what exactly OAuth2 is? So you can see it says it's an authorization framework that enables application to obtain limited access to the user account. Okay, so it's not just Google. We can also use it Facebook, GitHub, DigitalOcean. So we have so many options here. You can see, you, you can get more details about what is OAuth2, how exactly it works behind the scene. But now we want to use it. So we will be using Google login to access the website, okay? In fact, we'll not be doing the entire code here. The main focus would be how can we use Google login and let's access the token. So once you log in through Google, Google will send you a token, so, I mean for the website. And then based on that token, your website will give you the access. It's that simple. Okay, so to achieve that, what we'll do is first of all, we need to say, hey, we want to use OAuth2. And for that, we have to add a library. So what we'll do, we'll expand this. And if you go to palm.xml, we need to add one more dependency here for the OAuth2. So let's search for Maven repository. And here we have to search for Spring Security OAuth2 Auto Configure. Now before Spring 4 or Spring 5, you could have actually go for Spring Boot Security OAuth2. But now since after Spring 1.5 or Spring 5, we have to search for auto configure and here you can pick up any version let me pick up 2.1.2 that should work and here let me just copy this go back to our code and paste that dependency now once you say save it will get downloaded from the internet and it will be available in your maven dependency so that one step is done now once you got this you have to make some more changes so let's go back to our app security now don't you think we are using oauth Two, so we have to specify it somewhere. So here we'll say, hey, I'm using OR2, so please enable it. So you will say, add it, enable OR2 SSO. So that's, you have to add. So this is SSO here is a single sign on. So you can see we got the package as well. So once you have done that, now here we don't need user deals because we are not using database. So let me remove all this extra thing which we don't need as of now. The only method we need here is configure. Now in that too, we don't need to go for form login. Of course, in the previous video, we have worked on form login, but this time I would just want to use Google page, right? So here what you can do is you don't need any of this stuff. So we don't need form login. Let's remove that. The only thing we need here is dot HTTP basic. So that's the only thing you have here. So we got the and matcher and then we got HTTP basic. So you have to say whatever request it is getting that should be done with the help of OAuth2. So you don't need database anymore. In fact, just to clear some stuff, we don't even need this method anymore. So let me remove that, just have a clean code. Okay, in fact, I think we don't even need this HTTP basic. If required, we'll add that later. Now think about this. We are saying, hey, use OAuth2 SSO and then it will search for the OAuth2 token. But we have not configured anything here, right? So don't you think we have to specify it somewhere? We have to specify the configuration. Are we use Google, using Google? Are we using Facebook? Even if you are using Google, then how do we... Because see, every developer needs a developer account on Google, right? If you want to have that access. You need to create a client ID and a client secret key. So what I'm talking about is you have to configure it in a file. So this is our file, which is application properties. This is where you have to configure your OAuth 2. Now, what are the configuration we need? So I already have a text with me. Let me just paste it here. So these are the things we need. So this is only for OAuth2. So we are saying, hey, OAuth2 client access URI here is Google. So we are saying we want to use Google for my login. This is your token name, which is OAuth token if you want to use in your application. Now, this is important, the scope. 
Whenever you use OR2, of course, it will also give you authentication. But don't you think you have to also specify what are the features is accessible? Example, whenever the user access using Google, they will be having the access to the profile of the user and the email ID. In fact, if you don't want profile, just remove that. You can now you're only accessing email ID. Let me just have it there. Okay, this is something we have to specify, which is for Google, and then we are using OR token. But this is important, the client ID and client secret key. Oh, we have not specified that yet. Because depending upon the application for different users, we I mean, for different developers, we'll be having different client IDs here. So how will we get this client ID and client secret? So what you have to do is you have to create Google Cloud account where you will be creating the application for this client ID and client secret. So let's do that. Let's search for Google Cloud. So this is their official website and here you have to click on go to console because I'm already logged in and I have a Google Cloud account. So if you don't have, you can create one. The only thing is I'm using this for my personal use and that's why you can see I'm out of trial, but that's fine. If you have a Google premium account, you can use that. Otherwise you can go with the free one. Now here you have to click on this navigation bar and you have an option of API and services. This is where you have to click on credentials. Now, when you click on that, you can see we have the second option, second tab here as OAuth consent screen. This is where you have to specify the name of the application. We already have one because I've used it for one of my batch, but now let me just change it to Telisco. Nothing to specify here. You can see we have specified the scope here, email, profile, open ID. You can add scope. I guess you can also delete scope if you need. Uh, no, we don't have delete option, but you can add scope. Nothing to specify much here. Click on save. Now, once you click on save, you can see we have an option of create credentials. Click on that. Here we have to create a OAuth to client ID. When you click on that, it will give you an option. You, you can use it for web application, for Android, for Chrome app and iOS. Let's select web app here and let's give a name. Of course, you can go with the same name. I will say Telisco app. And this is where you have to specify the URL of your application. Now, since it is on localhost, I will simply say HTTP colon localhost colon 8080 and the redirect link which I want is on the login page. I will say HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 slash login and then click on okay, so enter, click on create. So that should work. Now once you click on create, you can see it will give you two things. It will give you uh, the ID and it will give the secret key. Okay, let me just copy that. So this two, this two is, is important. So click on that copied. Let's go back to the application. I have copied the client ID. It's time for secret key. Okay. So once I have uploaded this video, I'll be remo removing this client ID and secret key from my Google app so that no one can use it. In fact, there, no one will use it for wrong use. Okay. I guess that's done, but hold on. We still have one issue. We have specified that we are using or two. We have specified the configuration, but nowhere we have specified how we use the token. So here we have to specify public in your home controller. You can use any controller for that matter. I will say public. It will return the object of principle from Java security. And let's have the name as user. So whenever you use a token, we'll be using a token as user and then it will return the principal object, I mean the current user object. So it should return principal. Okay. But then when it will be called, so the request mapping, we have to specify that you have to say request mapping in here, whenever your user request, I mean, whenever you request for user, it should send that. And I want it to be in JSON format or XML format. So I will say response body. I don't want a page. I want XML or JSON. Once you have specified that, let's relaunch the application. I hope this will work. Relaunching the application. Let's go back to our incognito mode. So let's say localhost colon ADAD and you can see the moment you do that, the moment you try to use an application, I'm not searching for a Google page. You can see I have searched for localhost colon ADAD. The moment you say enter, it will take you to the home page or the Google page where you have to log in. In case if you have already logged in, it will not ask you for this page. So let me use Telisco's ID here, which is Telisco training at gmail.com. Click on next. Okay, you can see once I have logged in, I'm calling this page, but not this page. I want to call localhost colon 8080. Okay, nothing is coming on this page because nothing is there on this page. Oh, by the okay, I've made some changes before recording the video. Let me call the home page and you can see if it says welcome alien and we got it. 
right? That's how you can use this. But what if you want to know who is the user? So you can say slash user, and this is the current user. So that's how we can use it. You can use this token. You can have, you can save the data in database or in a file, in a session, it's your choice. You can see the token. It says who was the name of the user and then the picture, you can use that as well. What else we have here? There should be also email ID here, which I can't see, but it should be there. Email ID should be somewhere. Yeah, it's here. And that's the, your email ID. So that's how you can verify the user using Google or two. So that's it from this video where we have tried to use OR2 in the application. Let me know what you think about this video. If you have some more advanced code up apart from this, you can share that link in the comment section as well. It will be helpful for us. So that's it everyone. That's from this video. Bye-bye.